Throwing to start here is Tua. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. On second down, Tua. And oh, right away, he lost the football. Points one, two, and three in their defensive game plan was to get to the quarterback and knock the ball free. They did it there. Luckily, offense hangs on to it. Yeah, that's got to serve as a wake-up call, though, because they can't afford to let the ball go over to the defense and miss opportunities. And I'm not saying it happened here, but you know what a good rule of thumb is when a play like that occurs? You know who usually recovers it? The guy who missed his block and let his quarterback get hit. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Throwing now is Tungabailoa. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. They wind up getting 16, but even that's not quite enough. It's fourth down. I think that we all figured when he caught it that short of the marker that the defense almost relaxed and said, we've got this covered, and then all of a sudden, space to run after the catch, and now they're screaming, somebody get him down. Fortunately, they got to him and forced the fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Jake Bailey to punt for the Dolphins. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And that'll hit and go out of bounds, so they'll start just outside their own 40-yard line. So now the Titans get their first shot on offense. And they will be let out by a guy certainly still trying to prove himself here in the league, the young rookie quarterback. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment, running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 41-yard line. They'll run with Pollard to begin the drive. And he is going to lose yardage here. Big Calais Campbell fighting through to make the play in the backfield. I thought he did a nice job there setting an edge and making sure nothing could get to the outside. But he decided that wasn't enough for him. Worked his way back inside and made the tackle on the ball carrier. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Working from the gun, here's Levis. This one caught by Ridley. So just three yards on the completion there. And third and eight now. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. Here now a third down and eight. Levis back to throw. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. The sack there by Bradley Chubb. Even keeping the back end for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. Now on fourth down, here's Ryan Stonehouse to punt for Tennessee. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. 
This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. So out of bounds on the punt, and the spot will be, the side judge says, right at, yeah, right at the 35-yard line here. So Miami coming out for their second drive, and they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little I bit don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and they out. have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> They'll start on the ground with Moster. And he'll get this up to about the 40. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. We'll get an update when we come back to Miami. Ball at the 40 here for second and five. Again, they'll run it with Moster, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher, third and six. As a linebacker, you're taught to stay just slightly behind the ball carrier just in case he makes a cutback, but when you find the gap, shoot it and he found it all right took it straight into the backfield and made the tackle for a loss got an extra defensive back out there for the titans now here for third down Here's Tua. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they have to give up the football again after this one. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. A 39-yard punt, a return of five, and it'll be Titan football. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? So the drive's going to start with Pollard. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Levis looking to throw. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. That's the NFL vet, Calais Campbell, coming in and dragging him down. We had a pretty good idea that they were going to pressure this young quarterback, and that's now two sacks here in the first quarter. And, yeah, this is a secret to exactly nobody because if you're a rookie quarterback, you know you're going to see pressure. Defenses want to see how you're going to handle it or if it forces you into making bad decisions. That's their goal. So a tough situation to overcome here. Third and 17. Back to throw, it's Levis. 
And that is incomplete. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one. On fourth down, Ryan Stonehouse on to punt. Here's Barrios. They juked him. 44-yard punt, return of nine. And it'll be Dolphin football. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. And partner, I know so far, and we're still in the first half, but you love this game as a defensive guy. Zero to zero. We'll see if the offense can get going on this drive. Well, you know how they talk about music to your ears? How about what it does for your eyes when you watch something like this, right, where these teams are locked in and going at it, no points going up on the scoreboard. I'm loving it. You're exactly right. Well, switch over, though, to an offensive mindset for a moment. What do they need to do here to get on track and get some points? Well, I think a couple of ways. Number one, you pull out something that maybe they haven't seen before. Coaches always talk about unscouted looks. Maybe you give them something that they haven't seen on tape, and now you shock them that way. The second, Run your basic playbook, but run it so well that you give your skill position guys a chance to make big plays individually. On first down, Tonga Bailoa. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. On second down, Mostert. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Dolphins first down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. On first down, they go with Mostert again. He's able to work free for about six down to the 18. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. Here now, second and four. I know he ain't got it. 56, Mike, 56, right there, right there. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack, because remember the last drive, they went three and out. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. A run with Mostert up the middle. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid gain. Here we go now on first and goal. You ain't going nowhere. Mike 56, Mike 56. A Chan is not going to get in. In fact, he'll lose a couple of yards back to the three. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Defensively, he has been a presence in their backfield in the first half. Had a sack earlier, and now he comes up with a big tackle for a loss.
So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. Now they'll throw with Tagovailoa. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward, incomplete pass. This Titan defense, they just will not give in easily. Looking for another stop, third and goal. Tua going to throw. Dancing to his left. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. And that's an early scramble that can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. The offense is staying out there. Here we go on fourth and goal from the one. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And I'm not sure he got there. Did they stop him? They did. They tried to let the fullback pound it in between the tackles, but he stopped up short. And the Titans' defense will celebrate the goal line stand. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. They'll go with Pollard here on first down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. Because I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. Second and 10. Levis from his own end zone. Flushed out right. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield, hoping to lead to early points. And you can do it with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised, as we just saw there. Third and short, it's Levis. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. So that last play gives him a little more space now. Here's first and 10 at the 16-yard line. Pollard will take it up the gut. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Second down, here's Levis. That's complete. It's Josh Wiley. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. They toss it down to Pollard. 
And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. Bradley Chubb came in and got him. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. So a five-yard run the other way in the wrong direction, and that leads us to second and 15. Going to run again here with Pollard. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well. But when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him. And some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But they proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. No score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter from Miami. It's the Dolphins with the football as they get set to start their drive with a first and 10. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and ten. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second and two. Play action. Now it's Tua. Right back to Jalen Waddle for another catch. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Second and short. That's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They'll set up to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence, haven't allowed a point yet, flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Now a second and ten. Two on a throw again. And that throw behind his man. He missed him. Incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. The Dolphins on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. Getting this out to the flat, Mostert. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. Ready, 
So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 38. They'll send a receiver in motion to the right. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. Little razzle-dazzle by OBJ. And he's brought down at the 19 after a gain of 19. First down in the red zone. I think the reason that this play is so successful is not just the blocking at the point of attack, but how about the speed at which he takes the handoff? He's in motion already, so he's not coming from a flat start like a running back often is. He's at a full run by the time he gets the football. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. 56, Mike, 56, right there. Now a give to Mostert running right. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. We'll get an update when we come back to Hard Rock Stadium. Second down and four. Tight end left. Tight end left. Three down. Three down. Three down. Three down. Three down. Once again, it's Mostert. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. So first and goal from the nine-yard line. Here's Mostert. A good display of footwork. It gets him just inside the five to the four. 52 yards rushing for him now to this point. Hat tip to that offensive line. They're clearing some holes, even down here deep in the red zone. And that's a nice pickup on the ground on first and goal. Second and goal from inside the five. Who that? Who that? 56 to Mike, boy. 56. Check. Now a play fake. Here's Tongue of Iloa. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Harold Landry. The blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack, but he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football, had to eat it, and ended up on the ground. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Touchdown! Two of fighting his old Alabama teammate, Jalen Waddell. And the Dolphins post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. All the receivers in the league are plenty good enough, otherwise they wouldn't make it in the NFL. But the ones that go to the Pro Bowl, they have refined route running ability. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And that makes it 7 0 Dolphins. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it was finished off by a Jalen Waddle touchdown. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. 
From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. Breaks through the contact. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. Tennessee offense set to go again. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 25, here's second and six. Levis, a short throw taken in by Conquo, And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. Here comes third down at seven. Levis to throw it. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. It's a 10-yard pickup, and that's enough to move the chains. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot, so you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Levis sets up to throw here. Throw right side caught by Ridley. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Here's second and three. Now a shotgun handoff to Pollard. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. The Titans on third down, two for five to this point. This will be third and five. Here's Levis. And a throw there going to be incomplete. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that will move the ball downfield. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now. As he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. They'll call that a 33-yard punt with no return. And that will come the offense as they take over. 
Speedster Raheem Mostert in the rest of this offense out to start the drive. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Here's Tongue of Iloa on first and 10. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Here's second and 10. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Got a man, it's Barrios complete. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's a toss play right to Mostert. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Well, that was not what you would call straight line pursuit for a middle linebacker to make this play. He's got to work his way through the clutter to get to the ball carrier on the outside, and he does exactly that. That's called avoiding the trash. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. They'll run right side with Mostert. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. Third and eight. Let's go. Back to throw here. That is caught. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10, right at the 40. They'll look to throw. A short throw there, that's to Smythe, the tight end. It'll be a gain of five, and that's gonna bring up second down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's gonna wanna take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Here's a second and five. Come on, baby. Let's see what you got. Play 56. Back to throw. It's Hill complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 22-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Setting the throw on first down is Tua. Little short pass here to Hill. 
It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And yeah, Mostert going to pick up a Dolphins first down as he's down to the 12. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. From the gun, it's Tua. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. So a P.I. call going to cost him there defensively. What did you see? Well, I think it's the right call, partner, because sometimes we'll see officials kind of let them play. But by the letter of the law, that's definitely a penalty. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. Now Tua. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. They'll drop the throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he is out of bounds here. That time the completion goes for four yards and we're set up with a third and goal. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. And that is incomplete. But the pressure there on third down, forcing the errant pass. Fourth down coming up. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. They'll try it now with Mostert. Now. And he is in. Touchdown, Miami. A touchdown run there from a yard out. And the Dolphins' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Well, this defense held out as long as they could, but ultimately the running game wears them down from the one-yard line. And that gets set up throughout the entire drive, doesn't it? And when you put those big bodies and determination into that carry, the end result, touchdown. Sanders now to add the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. That drive, a long one, spanning 15 plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Raheem Mostert. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. 
From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. Levis to throw on first and ten here. And he will find Ridley. That's complete. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Levis trying to get his guys set as quickly as possible. Second and four. And the catch made, it's Tyler Boyd. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Levis. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. They'll throw it again with Levis. And he gets this one to Ridley complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Back to throw again. And yeah, that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Running right, it's Pollard. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. This defense is really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. On third down, it's Pollard. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. 
Now, if you're a fan of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. It kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. A first down run, good for about three. Second and seven coming up. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. The Dolphins got some strong play out of their quarterback number one, Tua Tungavailoa. He's got a touchdown pass on the ledger as his guys were able to build a double-digit lead. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. A two-touchdown game, 14-0 the score as we get rolling again here in this second half. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Out come the Titans now. They'll have it first on offense to start the third. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. and They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. And give the tackle to Anthony Walker. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Now second and five. He'll look to throw. He finds Hopkins complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Well, that's the kind of play that was lacking all the way through the first half. Maybe this can give them a little bit of a spark because they're not out of this game by any stretch. They go play action. Here's Levis. He'll buy some time right. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Oh, partner, just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. Now a second and six. A give to Pollard, running left. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half.
Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Levis back to throw. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down on the sack. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Levis looking to throw. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Back to throw, it's Levis. Swinging this out for Pollard. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. And now Nick Folk, his career long, 56 yards. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt, and this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot, and this will remain a two-touchdown game. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. Thought that might be the goose egg breaker. Still stuck on zero. Yeah, this is still a tight game, too. We got to keep that in mind because that miss there, you hang your head, you let it affect you the next time you go out there, then you've really hurt your ball club. Get yourself together. You might get another opportunity, and they're going to count on you to put it through the post. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Now second and three. Here's Tonga of Iloa to throw. Now he's forced out left. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Good work on the scamper by Tongue of Iloa. It's a first down. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain. So when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Tua sets up to pass it. That's going to be caught by Waddle. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode Really try to rush coming, and he's taken down. Harold Landry able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Well, remember, they had the nice gain on the previous play, but they just gave a lot of it back right there on that sack. Yeah, they get the sack, get back some real estate. Felt like the type of play that can spark a defense and swing some momentum. Almost felt like a take that type of a play, didn't it, partner?
So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Here's Tua. This one left side caught by Barrios. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. Third and 12. Looking to pass to him. He's got his target. That's complete. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. A lot of deflated looks on that defense. It seems like they just cannot find a way to get a key stop on third down. Here's another conversion, and now this offense, they're in a position to go up even further as they've got it first and goal. They'll run HN. And a little bit of space there takes it inside the five to the three. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. It's largely been the air attack that's gotten them down here, but now is where you start to lean on that running game. That's a good pickup there on first and goal. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Alec Ingold, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins have moved out in front by three touchdowns. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, as one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And it's now 21 to nothing. So that drive in total eight plays. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And able to get this out to the 25. The Titans offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. I kind of feel like they've reached a do or die point in this game, Charles. If they're gonna try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. So the drive's going to start with Pollard. And he'll get this up just shy of the 30. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. And give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. Second down, here's Levis. And this one is gonna be off the mark, too far out in front. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points 
And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football. And right now, I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. On first down, Levis. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Just what they need, a lecture from me, but subpar offense is what helped get them into this spot. And now they're continuing the trend with incompletions. That won't get them out of it if they don't change something soon. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Working from the gun, here's Levis. That's dumped off to Pollard. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. They run straight ahead here with Pollard, and the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. From the 38 now, here's a second and four. They'll set up to throw. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Levis out of the shotgun now. Ball oh, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. And now Nick Folk, his career long, 56 yards. This officially a 55-yard attempt. He's got the distance, but it's no good. Wide to the right, and this will stay a three-touchdown game. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. They're continuing to rock and roll, and at intermission, you know, maybe sometimes you fear after such a good first half of a letdown, but that, that wasn't the case. And what I remember most about being in those situations is exactly what you're talking about. You almost have that sense of satisfaction. You're like, ah, we're doing really well. But I remember one time someone saying, winning's fun, but so is playing really well. Why would we want to do otherwise? That was, that was the message to keep the intensity up, to keep things going. And that's exactly what we're seeing here from this team. Yeah, it's helped them extend their lead. And he'll have a Dolphins first down as he'll get this up to about the 42. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Ready. 
So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Tua gonna throw. A short throw there, that's to Smythe, the tight end. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Dolphins first down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Up the middle, a champ. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. From the 29, here's second down at seven. Throwing now is Chungamailoa. Throw right side, going to be caught here by Waddle. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. So the completion good for seven there. And they'll be faced with a third and inches. So a decent gain there, but not their fourth consecutive first down like they had on the first three plays. You sound almost disappointed there. You want to fire the offensive coordinator on that one or what? <laughs> They've gotten into a rhythm. I thought they were just going to keep going. Well, almost a win for the defense, but if that's your win, you're not doing very well right now. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. Blitz coming and down he goes. Credit the sack there to Arden Key. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead, and thus far it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. A run straight ahead with HM. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. So a little extra time to ponder this third and goal as we played three quarters. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Third and goal and still a long way from the end zone. They'll try and run it with HM. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. That'll back them up two yards and also bring up fourth. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. From the left hash, this from 37. The kick by Sanders is good, and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. Well, ultimately not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but 
They'll take the three, and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset so that you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. You got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. First and 10, it's Levis. They'll drop this underneath to Pollard. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. A second down throw from Levis. A quick throw there is incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Here's Levis. And that is incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Open man is Burks, and he's got him. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league... A loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Levis to throw once more. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. But at this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense, they're just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Levis on third down. This one caught by Ridley. And they'll get him down two yards shy after a pickup of eight. Fourth and two. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. And he is going to pick up the Titans' first down. 
It'll wind up being a gain of five there on fourth and two. The one thing I have learned about this league, more and more, you've got to take some chances. You know, if you play everything conservatively and play everything exactly like, okay, I know what to do in each situation, I don't think you're going to get very far. I love the call there going for it, even on his own side of the field. Yeah, and even though, even though you're on your own side of the field, they were creeping towards midfield, so not as crazy as Levis in trouble. Down he goes. Multiple players getting home there for an eight-yard loss. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has, but in his defense, he hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. You yeah. see what I did there? Yeah. He okay. needs better protection, that's for sure. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Levis to throw it. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Levis sets up to throw here. Again to Calvin Ridley, and he's got it once more. And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Desperation time now. Here's Levis. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth, and we've seen them do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at the 40. Hand off to HN to begin the drive. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play and it'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. The offense on third down, they've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and 10. A-chan here, they stay on the ground. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. 55 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. 56, Mike, 
Here we go. They'll run straight ahead with Wilson. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. He ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Buying time to his left. And two are going to slide to a halt, but he will have the first down. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. It certainly appears that he's been able to get a read on how they've wanted to contain him in this game. He's seen some places where he can beat them in big spots, and right there, he slides in with ease for the first down. 56 to Mike. 56 to Mike. Now they'll send Waddle in motion left. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Second and six. Now they'll hand it off to Wilson. And he is going to get this close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the Titans 14. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. Well, if you're going to have a relay race, you're probably going to pick your backs and receivers to run it, but don't underestimate the conditioning of the offensive line. They're out there just dictating things, staying on the field, and keeping a long drive going. They'll try and pick it up on the ground with Wilson. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage. The stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. A give running right, HM. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Again, it's A-Chan. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. One yard officially on the pickup, and it'll leave him with a third and 11. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing him further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. On third down, here's Wilson. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. Let's go. 
Sanders on for the extra point. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So that drive 12 plays in length. And it's capped off by a 13-yard touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Now the Titans getting set to go. It's been a tough go for them. It's still without any points here in the fourth quarter. And a big deficit, Charles. But they move the football on some drives. They just haven't had any points. Yeah, and I know in their minds they're thinking the game plan has actually been working. We just haven't scored points. Well, isn't that the bottom line, partner, to put points on the board? So if you're moving it and you're not scoring, is it really working? Right now, they've got nothing left to lose. They might as well go for broke. Levis now on first and 10. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked by Kendall Fuller, and he is going to get this one back to the 20-yard line. CD, this defense, man, at this rate, they're just having fun out there right now. And normally with this type of a lead, if you're a starter on defense, you're saying, hey, let the other guys play. But with this going on, no one wants to come out of the game. They all want their shot at picking off a pass. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. A give, this is Wilson. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. This second and four. They'll run again with Wilson. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. 42 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they are powering through, and they're controlling this game. Wilson is into the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. Well, when they said before the game that they were going to try and execute every second of this contest, I, I guess that that was taken literally because here they are in the final moments of the fourth, putting another touchdown on the board, Charles, to add to this big lead. I'm not a big believer in 110%, but it certainly applies here, doesn't it? Because some guys just can't go with less. As long as there's time left on the clock, they're pushing to get to the end zone one more time. They don't really care about what the optics show. They just want to finish the game off the way that they like to play it. Full speed, all out. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead.
Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Out come the Titans now. At this point, partner, things looking pretty bleak. They still haven't scored here in the fourth quarter, facing the big deficit. I just what silver linings, what can they look to do here offensively? You know, it's funny. I talked about this with a coach in the offseason and kind of had this scenario, like what feels good to you and what feels good to your team? You're down big. You really have like one possession left and you're trying to put points on the board that don't matter. But do they? And he told me they actually do matter. And in this situation, he's going to try and run the best offense he can run to have at least a little bit of confidence to take away from that game. So right now, they're going to try their best to get something up on the board and not get shut out. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins. And I tell you what, Charles, this might be about as good as it gets. They were incredible. Yeah, offense was in fine form. The defense threw the shutout at them. I think they worked in concert together. What I like about the offense was they held the ball pretty well. You know, time of possession, exactly what they were looking for in this one. And that helped out their defense. Didn't have to be out there the entire time. So when you do that and you're out there fresh playing, up a little extra spring in your step, and it showed up in this one. They had a ton of spring in their step. Impressive victory. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Dolphins are winners here as we say so long from South Florida.